I know a lot of you guys are avid fans of using Steam as a platform to play your games. I'll admit, the majority of games that I purchase, that Mrs. Diggs purchases these days are all through Steam as well. So I understand the appeal, I do. MMOs, however, are a little bit different. The majority of MMOs, the vast majority of MMOs are still unavailable via Steam. But that does not mean that there aren't a surplus of them to play. It just means that we have a slightly smaller selection of them to choose from. And that is what I am here right now today to talk about. The 10 best MMORPGs that are currently available on the Steam platform that you can navigate to, that you can go ahead and add to your library and hopefully play in the next few hours depending on your download speed. I am going to be going ahead here and rating each game individually out of 40 with combat, story, gameplay, and player base being the four key factors I use to rank the games. Before we go ahead and jump into today's video though, I am going to be giving away a copy of Final Fantasy 14, including the Shadowbringers expansion to one of you guys. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel because this giveaway is only available for you guys that support us. And then you just gotta leave a comment down in the comment section below stating why you would like to play Final Fantasy 14 right now if you currently can't for whatever reason. The winner will be announced next weekend in our next Weekly Bite of MMORPG News video. Also, real quick, did you guys know that we actually have a second channel as well, MMO Byte Mobile featuring top tens, gameplay, and the latest news on all of your favorite mobile games. If you're interested in mobile games, then you should go ahead and check that out. Now, let's go ahead here and talk about what MMOs you should be playing on Steam right now. I mean, maybe you can go ahead and add us as friends on Steam and then play with us. I have always found Tree of Savior or Ragnarok Online inspired MMOs to be really cute. I've always had a soft spot for them and this was no different. This is one of the few MMOs out there that have an incredibly expansive class system providing so many different ways to play the game. Each class has their own unique abilities and play style, which when coupled with the very fluid action combat system makes for some very highly engaging combat. I haven't really seen much if any story in Tree of Savior, which was highly disappointing for me. There's nothing worse than being disconnected from the world you're playing through, pushing through the game for the sake of leveling. Graphically, Tree of Savior is a very unique looking game that I am quite fond of. It uses really adorable little sprites and has really high quality attack and skill animations. The player base, however, is very low. Not empty, but there are maybe a thousand, a couple thousand total players playing each month, which is enough to sustain the game, but not nearly as many as it could have had had the game not fumbled when it launched initially. Overall, this is an MMO that I feel every MMO fan needs to try out, but I can understand why the game never really took off, having played both the initial incarnation of Tree of Savior and the version that's available right now. Okay, so maybe this rating system won't really do the game justice, as the majority of what I've used to rank all 10 games thus far works for them, with Albion Online probably being the only game out of all 10 games that it doesn't really apply to. Albion Online is a very large sandbox MMO, one where neither graphics, nor combat, nor story are really the main focus of what is presented to players. Instead, it's the sense of freedom to do whatever you want that really makes this game shine. But nevertheless, this is how we're doing things. The combat is a point and click style where you click the enemy, you cycle through abilities, and then you click the next enemy. It's pretty basic, at least at the introductory levels of the game. I can't say that I ever really got far enough to be able to claim otherwise. The story was there, but it wasn't really very prevalent throughout my experience, unfortunately. I enjoy sandbox games, and I'm aware that they often don't hold your hand, so this was expected. Graphically, Albion Online doesn't really look bad. It has a, a very specific graphical style that definitely doesn't appeal to everyone, but I find it to still be pretty good. The player base is actually much higher than I'd expected it to be. Having hundreds of thousands of active players logging into play every month. Overall, this is an MMO that provides you almost endless freedom to play what you want, how you want. It's something that players need to experience at least once. Story in my MMOs, heck, story in my games is something that is required for me to fully become enthralled in. Whenever people talk about an MMO having a good story, I could think of maybe a handful of games. Star Wars The Old Republic is one of those games. This is one of only two different sci-fi MMO in this list and is set within the, you guessed it, Star Wars universe. I have played through my fair share of games that have incredibly slow combat, and I can say this from a place of love, I have never really been a fan of the combat in The Old Republic. It felt very 
dated and felt incredibly clunky, especially considering when this game was released and just, I don't know, it felt very bland when compared to a lot of its competitors. The story is incredible though, providing so many branching choices that affect the narrative, the characters you meet, recruit, end up allying with, enemies with. This is probably the MMO with the most in-depth, well thought out story available in an MMO. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to that sentiment. Graphically, the Old Republic doesn't look bad. It definitely looks and feels dated, sure. And that can make it difficult for new generation gamers to really acclimate to, especially with the likes of games like BDO out there. But for a sci-fi MMO, this is okay. The player base has grown exponentially after launching on the Steam. And as such, the player base is at much higher numbers than it probably has been in years. Overall, I'd say this is an above average MMO, but it's definitely held down by its dated look, its dated combat, and its bad business model. This is one of the two hub-based MMOs in this list. Typically, I find open-world MMOs to be the superior MMO type. I feel like many of you guys would agree, as that sense of freedom is, for lack of a better word, just freeing. But this is one of those rare instances where it just ends up being so much better than the norm. Plus, you're given the freedom to take groups and groups worth of players out into large-scale battles, which really makes it quite different to all of its hub competitors. Combat in PSO2 is one of the better combat types out there, especially for an anime MMO. Like, granted, it is not the best, despite what some players will argue, but it is still damn good. Being able to swap between three different weapon types on the fly makes certain of that. While the story is definitely interesting, it's just so disconnected from the game overall that I'm really not sure what to say about it. Yes, it is a lot of fun to play through if you actually want to play through it, but it almost seems like the story is entirely optional. Graphically, this is one of the best looking anime MMOs out there, and the sheer levels of customization present leave you able to create something truly unique. I don't think that there is another anime MMO out there currently with the level of customization that PSO2 has. The player base is doing exceptionally well right now, split between PC and Xbox players, and with new Genesis coming very, very soon, you can bet that that will increase further next year. Overall, PSO2 is probably one of the better MMOs out right now. Yes, it is held back a little bit by its dated, uh... Well, everything, but that will change next year with its mass graphical overhaul. There aren't really many monster collecting MMOs out there currently. Dragomon Hunter shut down, Shin Megami Tensai shut down. We have some Pokemon MMOs and Dokabees on the horizon, but this is probably the only type of game of its kind that I'll include, or rather, this is the only type of game I believe in the entire genre as a whole right now. Being a huge Pokemon and Digimon fan, this really appealed to me and to quite a few different players considering how many copies this game sold on Steam. The combat is turn-based with your two tempt him and the two enemy Temtem taking turns attacking one another. The story is actually what pushes you through the game. It unlocks new dojos, it unlocks new Temtem, entirely new landmasses, and it plays about as well as you'd expect out of a Pokemon game, if a little more mature. Graphically, the game is incredibly crisp. The environments, the characters, the Temtem, and even the abilities all look incredibly high quality. I never expected such a good looking game to come from an indie developer, especially with how many indie games, especially MMOs, have turned out to ultimately be a scam. The player base originally had over 40,000 players playing at any given time. But since they're slowly pushing through early access to finish the game, they average around a thousand players concurrently logged in via Steam, with tens of thousands likely playing each day. Overall, Temtem is one of my favorite MMOs. I log in from time to time and await every new large patch with additional regions and additional Temtem with eager anticipation. This is one of the two hub-based MMOs in this list. I'm sure you can guess which the other one is, but let's talk about Dungeon Fighter. This is an MMO that I've found myself coming back to year after year, and there are a few different reasons for that. Class system in this game is so deep, so well thought out, with every class having several characters they can evolve into. Each class further has their own unique backstory, their own history, and that leads to a lot of opportunities for personal identity and growth. The classes all play very differently from one another, but the combat being being entirely action-based is probably the best I've had the pleasure of playing in a dungeon crawler like this. The story is pretty well thought out as well. There's a lot of it, possibly too much of it at times, but that is never an issue. Graphically, the game also uses a unique sprite-based graphical style, one that I thoroughly enjoy watching both in-game and during the little cinematics. Skill effects are ridiculously good quality, and having my character fly all over the screen utilizing those abilities is crazy. The player base is, if I include China, the highest 
of any game in the entire world, having tens of millions of active players in China alone per day. Overall, this is an MMO that I thoroughly enjoy, having played through it many, many times over the last several years. I do find that it does tend to get repetitive at times though, but that's why I take a long break. I know some of you might not technically consider Destiny 2 an MMO, but according to the developers themselves, after dodging being referred to as an MMO for many, many years, they recently began listing themselves as a full action MMO. So here we are, including it in this list. I haven't played much of Destiny 2, I'll be the first to admit this, so I guess it's a good idea that we're going to begin streaming it over on our Twitch channel starting next month, right? This is one of the two sci-fi MMOs on this list, but where one is a full MMO, MMORPG, Destiny 2 is an MMO FPS. Combat is taken from a first person perspective rather than third person like the majority of MMOs. Since it's an FPS, you can imagine the gameplay, right? The story I've only seen a little bit of, but I've heard it is quite detailed and incredibly enjoyable. I look forward to pushing through more of it myself as I enjoy what sci-fi games typically offer their players. Graphically, the game looks good, not amazing like some of the other titles on this list, but still pretty damn good. But considering this is a sci-fi title, they there's really only so much you could do with it, right? The player base is ridiculously high, totaling almost 300,000 players logged in concurrently during its peak, and at least 200 to 300,000 concurrent players every day, totaling tens of millions of active players playing monthly, which is insane. Overall, this is a game that you absolutely need to play. If you haven't yet, you're missing out and you need to. I know. I know. Why would you include Black Desert in the list of top MMOs? Honestly, because if you ignore the blatant pay to win, this is not a bad game at all. In fact, there are various different facets of Black Desert Online that are pretty damn amazing. I've played this game on and off for what seems like years at this point, and like a few other games on this list, I have always found myself coming back to it. This is mostly due to the new classes though, as opposed to me missing the game overall. The combat is arguably the best combat in an action MMO. People have been claiming this for years, and there is yet to be a release that could compete with it. Maybe Terra or Blade and Soul could be considered worthy of having comparable quality combat systems, but even they're pushing it. The story in Black Desert Online is, uh, well, I mean, I would have to actually see the story to talk about it. What I played through of it was, uh, well, it, it, it was lacking, severely lacking. Graphically, Black Desert looks stunning, even more so after the recent remaster that came out. The gorgeous environments, the attention to detail on gear, the characters, and don't even get me started on the character creator. Yeesh, that thing is a beast. The player base for the game is actually on the decline for the first time since its release, but it still holds more players than the vast majority of the rest of the genre, being in the 10 most played MMOs this year. Overall, this is an experience that you need to have. There is plenty to do, just not in terms of story. But I I mean, that's what the upcoming Crimson Desert MMO is supposed to remedy. I have never really dedicated as much time as I perhaps should have to the Elder Scrolls Online, but I have played it on and off for the last few years. This is one of the few MMOs that are actually set within an already existing gaming franchise, and as such, the funding they have is uh, more than almost any other game in the genre. One issue I've always had with the game though, and I know a lot of people mirrored this sentiment, is that the combat is kind of slow. Maybe not at endgame, but unfortunately, I have never made it to endgame in ESO. While it definitely has a very deep, complex class and ability system, the combat has always been a huge turnoff for me. The story in the game, though, both the main story and the zone stories are some of the best in the genre. They've built this game in a way that you become completely immersed in the zone that you're actively leveling in, something that I haven't really found in any other MMO. But this also leads to a, a, a slight disconnect from the overall story as often I found myself wandering around questing for hours with no idea what was even going on in the main story as it had just been so long since I last played it. Initially, people were kind of upset that the MMO didn't look substantially superior to Skyrim, which had been out for years already. But honestly, I have never found the graphics to be bad. I find them actually quite good. Just the character models are a little bit, uh, I don't know, like, 2015-ish, maybe 2010-ish. The player base is always and likely will remain for the foreseeable future quite a bit larger than the majority of MMOs. This is after all in the top five most populated MMOs on the market. Overall, The Elder Scrolls Online is a very high quality game with an incredibly active player base. And with the content patches it regularly gets and expansions coming out every other year, this is a game that will always find new players to enjoy what it has to offer.
I think outside of World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV is probably the only MMO that I've dedicated years of my life to. Now, I do take breaks between patches, as I feel everyone should, but I always see myself coming back to the game. The reason for that is because this is one of the best quality MMOs out there right now, and being based in an already existing and incredibly successful franchise allows for crossovers, collaborations, and more with the main series that you just don't see anywhere else. I know combat has been a very controversial topic in Final Fantasy XIV, some people believe that the combat is far too slow to really enjoy it, but being a fan of tab target combat myself and playing at endgame every expansion, I can safely say that the combat is far from being too slow, at least in endgame. Making it to endgame though, yeah, definitely. The story, especially with Shadowbringers, has solidified this as the greatest story in any MMO to date for me. There are only a handful of MMOs that have a story that can really captivate me, and this is one of those games. Everyone will tell you how good Shadowbringers has been, but I have never felt as immersed in a game with the 10 PCs with its world as I have with Final Fantasy XIV. Graphically, Final Fantasy XIV is beautiful. I know not necessarily as good looking as some other MMOs out there, but I feel like its softer, warmer aesthetic allows for a, I don't know, a different type of beauty. The character models, the environments themselves, even the boss fights are all incredible to look at. The player base was, at the time of Shadowbringers release, at 1.2 million active subscribers, an all-time high for the game. This remains one of the two most actively played MMOs in the genre to date. Overall, Final Fantasy XIV is by far one of the deepest, most complete MMOs that I have ever played. It's it's a type of MMO experience that you just won't find anywhere else. And I know I've said that about multiple of the different MMOs here, but that's because it's true. And these are what are arguably the best MMORPGs that are currently available on Steam right now in 2020. 2021 might change that, sure, but right now, this is what we have available. These are the 10 best. At least that's in my opinion. And that is, after all, what this entire list is. My pure, raw, subjective opinion of the genre and what is currently available on Steam. I know some of your guys' opinions might differ, though. So with that in mind, what are your top 10 MMORPGs that are currently available on Steam right now? Who knows, when someone's scrolling down through the comment section looking for recommendations, they might go ahead and happen across your comment, and you might help one of those players players end up in a, an MMO that they genuinely enjoy, that they possibly or probably haven't played before. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it, yeah. All hard work's gonna be worth it, ooh.